I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today, oh boy, do we get into the Iron Spell Mod and upgrade our gear. And look, we can do this. I seem to have fallen into a bunch of lights. Yes, tis the season, and uh, well, I'm all kitted out and ready for the holiday season. And with that being said, I think today we should adventure a little bit. Uh, we've been doing a lot of tech recently, a lot of progression, and we've gotten resources now automated. So I think today we should maybe work on getting a better set of gear. Ah, uh, yes. My current gear is falling apart. We have used it from the Stargate mod, and it has been fantastic. But we should be able to today upgrade our gear, but it is going to require a little bit of adventuring in order to do this. Now we've had our hands on all the modium for a little while, but I still have yet to make any tools or gear from it. Um, and that's because of one simple reason. I never felt like I was ready, but now I think I am because we have to go on the hunt for the all the modium smithing template. And I love this. I love that this has been now incorporated into this version of all the mods. And I think it's a fantastic thing. However, it does include some RNG. And I'm hoping that we get lucky today uh, as we need to take our brush and go, as it says right here, at least for this smithing template, the Aldamadium one. And we need to look for suspic uh, suspicious clay in an ancient city. Um, that sounds very difficult, as if I make any sudden movements, I could potentially summon the Warden. And I don't think I'm, I'm ready still for the Warden. That Warden's a beefy boy, you yeah? know? Beefy. Now, back in the deep dark- oh, what, one second, let me turn the lights on. <laughs> there we go. Back in the deep dark, we should be able to find this. I don't know exactly, though, where it's going to be at. But now that we have, like, perfect hover, this will be a little bit easier to navigate and search for this as we are going to be looking for some suspicious gravel, I believe. It says right here, suspicious clay, actually, not gravel. So we need to look for clay textures through this area and hopefully find some that looks sort of suspicious. And it may be hidden underneath things like this. Oh boy. We've got to be careful when we do stuff like that. But yes, it is going to look like clay, supposedly. Right here, I believe, is the first suspicious clay that I've seen so far. There's not been a lot of it, so... Okay, good. It didn't spawn anything. Let's, let's make sure to sneak. And... Is this it? Oh my gosh, it is on our first one. But finding this is not easy. I will say that finding this... This clay, it does stick out like a sore thumb, but look how like random that is. It's just randomly here. So the chances of finding these are going to be pretty difficult. I don't know if they're a hundred percent chance to come from this clay. It does show that it does come from the ancient city, but I have no idea if more things come from this. Yeah, I, I've tried looking around in several different places. By the way, is this packed ice? Oh my goodness. I, I've looked around almost through the entire thing. And that was the only one that I have seen, unless I'm just completely blind and looking over it, which, I mean, to be fair, that 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 is pretty much me. Now, I do want to open a couple of these chests. This is probably a bad idea. Okay, that one didn't open anything. This is definitely going to summon one. I'm going to try to take as much as I can before one spawns. <laughs> There's a smithing temple. I'm going to take it. Uh, There's disc fragments. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Because one's about to spawn. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna head out of here, and we're gonna head back to the base. Woo! Okay, I'm definitely in for a surprise whenever I go back there. Now, because of all the cool things that we've had set up with the mystical agriculture over here, like all of this that has been running, we can easily duplicate these templates. Take a look at this. So, the recipe for, for basically duplicating the template requires deep slate and uh, netherite ingots. And normally netherite would be kind of difficult, but we do have a, an abundance of netherite essence. So we can just craft a bunch of this and we should be able to make now a template and duplicate our templates over and over again. Um, because we're going to need one for all of the pieces of gear and we're also going to need it for each tool we decide to make. And now for the fun part, I, I just need to grind out a little bit more all the modium and we should have enough to be able to make 
all the gear that we need. So up until this point, we haven't really played around with this mod called Iron Spells, right? Um, and it, it, this right here, so Iron Spells and Spellbooks is sort of a mod that we've kind of overlooked. We've been looting things and a bunch of this stuff was incorporated, but we've never really gotten into it. And I think this is actually going to be the gear that we should make. Now, I'm gonna make this gear. This is just, for example, the Pyromancer gear, um, as it does seem pretty easy to make. I already have the runes from looting. Um, apparently you can get these from Dead Kings, but it does also appear that you can get them from loot, um, as I did manage to actually get some of these blank rune stones from looting. Um, it does also say it can drop from mob drops, so you can potentially get this particular one from maybe those uh, those buildings that we had looted. So, uh, with that, I do have some runes, right? So, we actually have that one, um, uh, yeah, a, a vocation rune that we got from that evoker sort of building. Um, and then these we must have gotten from somewhere else. I don't quite remember, but I'm sure some loot somewhere ended up giving us. Otherwise, I wouldn't have them. So... To make this Pyromancer, we actually have everything we need. We just need some wool, and we have all of this arcane essence that is built up in our mob farm. Um, and then to make this, we just take the runes and surround it by blaze. Like, that's pretty straightforward. And we can make all of this gear. Now, once we have all of this gear made, oh, this is where the fun really starts to come into play. Because we can upgrade this into a very special, all the modium piece of gear that is from all the wizard's gear. Now I notice it says 5% mana regeneration, 200% or 200 plus max mana and 20% spell power. What I'm wondering, which I'm, I'm positive, it is definitely directed towards iron spells and spell books. But what I'm wondering is, does this also by any means affect Ars Nouveau? Uh, because that would be really, really nice having that particular type of gear that can also boost Ars Nouveau. It's not necessary as enchants can definitely get you where you need to be with Ars, but it would be kind of a nice little thing if it did help with that. I'm sure we'll figure this out once we get everything all crafted up. Um, but yes, <laughs> here we go. Let's go ahead and make the four fire runes that we're going to need. This is going to allow us to make all of these pieces. Um, and we should be able to make several cloths, but we've got to make some wool. So let's do this. We've not even made a single spell for our spell book within this mod or anything like that. And here we are making some pretty powerful gear that is going to help us with it. Um, so now that I have the base gear, I kind of want to see what this looks like. Um, so let's go ahead and toggle these things and which are just cosmetic. And let's go ahead and put this gear on and set it up so that way we can see all of our gear. So this is what this gear looks like on its own. And I will say that's pretty sleek. That is pretty nice. And this is the pyro gear, which is probably the gear that I would love the most as I really like that sort of fire mage sort of idea. Uh, it seems pretty cool. But now we have a new mana bar, and I think this is the mana bar that is uh, is what this whole mod is all about. Um, and so, we need to make some spells, but first, let's go ahead and upgrade this gear, which is already pretty nice. Let's go ahead and upgrade it to the Aldamadium version. Now, this is where those templates come into play. So we'll just put the piece of gear in and then the all the mod and this will end up making this new mage. It doesn't really matter, like I said, what type of robe or gear you have made because this will all end up being converted over into the all the modium version, which I think just based on the sprite here looks really nice. Um, also, I want to upgrade my netherite pick and we should be able to upgrade that into the un or indestructible fortune pick now, which will allow us to start mining vibranium, uh, which we found in the nether. We've actually found quite a few in the nether. And so we've effectively completed these tasks. Oh, we got a wind generator. And this one has an epic reward. Oh, we got a sigil of the socketing. That's uh, that's from apotheosis. That could be pretty nice. But yeah, this leads us into some other adventure based paths. Um, finding these other templates are going to be found, I believe, uh, we can get the vibranium smithing template in the nether in the bastions. And then the unobtainium one, uh, is found in the other, uh, which this one I've been told is very dangerous to get. Um, and I believe I did get it when I played this over on Twitch and, uh, it was interesting back then. A uh, lot of implementations of how the other uh, is set up has changed since then, but uh, 
yeah, it'll be an experience. Now, let's see what this gear looks like, as I'm pretty excited. Oh, boy. <laughs> what is on my face? I don't know, but either way, that is kind of cool looking. Like, we have this veil. Ah, oh, that's actually a nice looking armor set. I love when armor actually looks like the sprite. Ah, I love, I love custom models. Now with this gear on, we have a whopping 900 mana to use from this Spellbook mod. So should we dabble a little bit in the Spellbook mod? I think we should. I think we should definitely test it out and see what this is all about. Now, as we get into this mod, we're going to have to get a little bit witchy. <laughs> yes, witchy. That's probably the best word to use here. Um, And notice, by the way, we already have some books. And this is going to be pretty nice. We have a ton of them. This is an epic uh, spell book, which will hold five spells. And the spell books are pretty integral to the mod. Uh, this is how we're going to put those scrolls that we got early on into something that we can use. And so that's going to lead us into the iron spells mod, right? Because by default, well, this doesn't do anything on its own. So step with me into my little cubby hole as we start to work out how we're going to get into this mod. And that is going to start with the Iron Spells and Spellbook inscription table. And inside here, we can then program our own spells using, we go into the Irons mod, using these scrolls. And every single one of these tells us a different thing, right? And so we need to take a look at what they do, and then we can figure out what would be the best combination to put in here. Now, keep in mind, that if we do put, for example, some scrolls inside of our book here, um, if we put them in, right, we can remove them by doing this. So don't feel like it's permanent when you put them in, as you can take them back out. Now, it would be ridiculous for me to go over every single spell that's in this pack, as there are a ton of them. But I'm going to look through the ones that I currently have, and I'm going to see what would best suit our adventures moving forward. By the way, some tips when searching for what you can put in your book, you got to keep in mind the type that your book is. For example, the book that we're using is an epic spell book. So we can put up to epic scrolls inside of this book. And a cool way to search is by actually using the hash. And that is actually going to look for the, uh, the information uh, outside of the name that we see in here. And it's going to look for that data and it'll sort by it. So you can actually uh, spef uh, specify two different things inside here in order to see those and making it a little easier to search. Now, I don't know what any of these particular spells do, but this one right here is a shield scroll. And it says it could potentially give us 165 HP. I don't know if that is correct, but if that is the case, that is kind of ridiculous. Um, and that is definitely going in here. And then this one right here is a firebolt scroll. And now this is related to fire. And we are using a book that is going to give us 10% uh, increased power on fire spells. So this actually should be even higher than this. Um, and this seems pretty darn cool. So that seems like a weapon. And then this right here is a magma bomb scroll, which is an AOE weapon, also fire, which I think is very fitting. Um, this one is a burning dash scroll, another fire spell. I'm interested to see how that functions. And then this one is an angel wing scroll. And I'm almost wondering if this is going to give some sort of creative flight. That would be kind of powerful. All of this combined together, we now have ourselves a book. Um, now, we can scroll by holding down shift. And we can scroll through the list. Um, that's one way that we can get through this. But I think there's some hotkeys that we can set up. And yeah, I know. There's a lot of hotkeys in this pack. But I think we can set up hotkeys for this mod in particular while we use it. You know what? That is something that we need. We need a hotkey scroller, right? That allows us to set profiles for all of our individual hotkeys. Ah, that's a good mod idea. So I ended up setting the the, the wheel activation to my F key, which seems to work really nice. Um, and I noticed that that spell that I think was 16 by default is now at 22.8 damage. Um, now let's test out the shield first and let's watch how this works. I'm gonna hold down right click and this is supposed to activate. And oh, it's just like a shield that is just like presented in front of you. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. It's like putting up a wall in front of you. That's actually kind of cool. Okay. And it has a cooldown. Oh, interesting. 
Um, so let's try out this one, or let's try out the angel wing. Let's take off our jet pack just so we can make sure that everything feels smooth. And let's activate this. Okay, it's this angel wing on cooldown. Oh, oh no, it's, it gives us an elytra. Okay, and it does say it has a limit to how far it lasts, which would be kind of scary if you uh, activate this wrong, I guess. <laughs> but yes, we have an elytra. Um, and it does say, right, that this lasts for 2.1 meters. I don't quite know how far that is in Minecraft. Um, but yeah, 2.1 meters. I thought a single block was a meter, but maybe it's it's meaning something different. Ah, it also has a time duration. So it seems like it lasts about two minutes, which is honestly really nice. That's a that's a really nice spell. Now I wonder, this other spell is a dash, but it's a burning dash? Ah, so yes. I was wondering is if it would work with this other spell that we have casted. Okay, so it does. So we can essentially uh, have a Elytra Flight. So let's go ahead and try this out again. So let's go ahead and activate, let's change our view and there we go. Oh, that is so sick. That is so sick. Oh, you've got to love it. You've got to love this. And it looks like we have enough time technically that we can just continue to activate it to fly around as if we have an elytra. Oh, there we go. Our elytra flight ran out. Thankfully, we have the bunny boots on, so I don't have to worry about that too much uh, about taking fall damage. But if you didn't, you probably would take fall damage after you ran out of time on your flight. That is so cool, though, to be able to use this in combination with each other. Oh, yes. That could be a really early game way of getting some sort of elytra before getting an elytra, right? Now for the truly fun part. Let's try out this fire bolt. It does 26 damage. <laughs> it just... Wait, how quickly can we shoot this? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm a Pokemon using Ember right now. That's actually pretty powerful because we could just spam this with this gear and this does so much damage that one shots that I don't I don't know if there's a mob that it wouldn't one shot I mean that's that's a lot of damage okay here's something to test we have phantoms coming in let's test the bolt and see if we can get multiple multiple of these in one go I just need to I need to line them all up I need to get them all after me all in one go, which is kind of hard to do, by the way. But if you can get them on the ground like this, then you might be able to get all of them down here. Okay, they're all sort of on the ground. At least two of them are. Oh, that's right. If you get hit, it cancels out the spell. Oh, uh, this one has like a preparation. Oh, that is, that is cool. Does it light them on fire? Oh, that does not seem to work. Okay, definitely the fire bolt. Very powerful. That is very powerful. It is one-shotting these things. Also generating ash, which is kind of hilarious. Just look how quickly it just kills anything in its in its wake. That's amazing. Okay, so this I do like this. Yeah, I, I had played around with the, uh, the this mod a little bit. Um, while streaming and uh, it wasn't the things that I had set up wasn't that amazing, but I think in the combination with this armor Oh, this this has made this mod actually really really nice Hello, this is the perfect time to use this on you <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, it works. It works. Oh, it didn't it didn't oh there they go get back in there over here in the into the fields of flames all right, and then the burning dash. Does this actually hurt the mobs? I think it's supposed to hurt them. If I use it, yes. So we can dash into mobs and it's supposed to damage them as well. That is so cool. And I wonder what happens if I put a shield up. <laughs> it, it hits the shield and it can't get to me. Aha, take that. Now I think I'm going to replace the like angel one with this fortify scroll, which seems really powerful. And I think these are also upgradable. You can put them inside 
of, if you have multiple, you can put them inside of the arcane and it will actually upgrade them. So it'll take like two level twos, for example, like I have right now, and it'll upgrade it to a level three inside an arcane anvil. That's pretty darn cool. So let's replace that flying spell with this fortify spell, um, which is pretty similar to that. Well, it's, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be what I thought that that shield was going to do. This one is actually going to give me temporary hearts. So when I activate this, it does have a little bit of time to, to cast, but there we go. Look, we got temporary hearts, which is really, really nice. What are some other things that we get from this? We also get um, 16, oh, the block radius, because so it can heal, I guess, multiple people inside of that radius. That's really nice. Now, this isn't only combat, because there are also ways of, like, breaking blocks with this mod. For example, this is a scroll that is called the Spectral Hammer, and it's supposed to mine out a 5x5 five five area, I think. Maybe it only works on stone and did not work on clay. But yeah, it's supposed to, it's supposed to mine out a five by five. Let's try it again. There it goes. A five by five by five area, which is quite a bit. And it's such a cool animation. Okay. I've got to admit, I, I was a little bit, a little bit, you know, kind of not for this mod, but now I absolutely love this. This is so cool. I mean, honestly, how could you not like this? Look at this. This, this, this summons an ender chest. Like it literally opens up a virtual ender chest for you. But I, what do you, what, how could you, how could you not like this? I guess I should be asking myself that because I'm the one who's put it off and playing around with this mod for so long. Now to really maximize everything, I think the creation of scrolls is how we're supposed to go about this. So you end up creating scrolls on the scroll forge. So we're gonna need some crying obsidian to be able to make this. This will allow us to craft scrolls. Then we can upgrade these scrolls. So once we have them crafted, we can continue to level them up. And this is how you would craft some of the really high tier scrolls. Um, so that's kind of interesting, right? So we need to go through this per, this process of processing up our scrolls using the arcane anvil, which doesn't seem too bad to craft, just some amethyst and a diamond. Whereas this one though, we do need to find the crying obsidian. And the best place to find those, well, that's going to be those uh, abandoned portals that are you know located throughout the world. Now, something else I noticed is that there's a legendary all the mod spellbook that gives you up to 13 once you have an unobtainium version of this, and they'll have 50% cooldown reduction and lowered cast time. That sounds really powerful. And well, that's what all the mods are all about. But we do need an ancient codex. And apparently these ancient codex need to be crafted from a few things that we I think we have some of these things, but we do not have a ruined book. This, we're supposed to be able to find, I believe, inside the chest. It says Skulk Infested Cities it is found in. Oh, if we can do that, we should be able to make it, because I think, I think we have just about everything. We just don't have blood vials. So, I mean, between this and honestly just capturing a mob, <laughs> we should be able to craft that. That is going to be a really nice spell book, holding 11 different spells. Oh my goodness. I mean, honestly, now that I'm in this gear, I don't feel as scared of the Warden, even though I, I haven't tested my abilities just yet. But I do want to look for that very specific item. Not seeing it there. I don't see it there, but I will take these ink pieces. These are a part of this Irons mod. Um, and this is an Origins of Darkness book. I take the disc fragments. I'm going to leave the gear for now. I'll take the blood. Yeah, there's, there's still a lot to sort of discover here. Hopefully we can find it. There's some echo shards. Those are going to be useful. This ancient knowledge fragment are actually kind of useful as well as apparently there's a deeper part of this mod that uh, will allow you to learn eldritch spells, which are something that's apparently a little later on. Not quite sure what that's all about. Ooh. Oh, we have a warden spawning in, but I didn't find it. I found it. <laughs> oh no. I'm kind of curious. I want to just, I want to see real quick. Where's the warden at? Okay, okay. I want to just see how much protection we actually have. How much protection? Hit me once. Hit me once. Oh, okay, I'm not ready. We need a chance. We totally need a chance. If he hit me for that many hearts, even in this gear, all the modium gear, oh, I'm in trouble. Okay, yeah, we are going to definitely need enchants, and we're going to need apotheosis, because <laughs> there's no way we're surviving that blast. So I actually managed to find two of the ruined books, because I looted one chest right before, but this is where we get these rings, 
Um, so I definitely noticed we get a, a few different types of rings from there. So I don't know how random it is because some of these don't have crafting recipes. So I'm assuming the only way to get them is via looting. So this one gives us uh, ice block levels, which is kind of nice. So let's upgrade this. Um, so we need the blood vials. That's the only thing we do not have is the blood vials themselves. So I'm assuming we're going to get blood or we're actually going to need uh, bottles, right? So we're gonna need some bottles and then we're gonna need a capture device such as like the quantum catcher. And we just need to catch a mob of some kind. Does it really matter? I don't know. Maybe a, ch a chicken might work or maybe a, maybe this guy would work. I don't know. We could, we could test it out. But in order for this to work, we are going to need a cauldron, apparently, and a campfire. So a campfire and a cauldron are all we need. And I've devised a little bit of a room over here. And inside this area, we can actually set up that campfire. And then we place the cauldron on top. And that creates a brewing cauldron. And so this is what I was wondering. If we place this guy on top, maybe it has to be specifically a mob. Or do I have to do something special with it? I think it has to be like a hostile mob, maybe. I think this might work, but I feel like there's some sort of conflict going on with the potion blender mod. Let's try not to place it directly on top. There we go. Place it like this, where we don't place it directly on top because that's converting it into something else. And then place this in. Aha. There we go. That's what we need. And then that gets us the bottle. Aha. So it was just a simple mod conflict. Now, courtesy of a local mob spawner, we have ourselves a husk. Aha. Oh, that's interesting. So it seems like when it takes damage, it fills up. But that's that's more than fine. Ah, we're going to need some sort of trap door to sort of force mobs through here. Because this lets them stay. But still, this right here, I'm assuming is how you branch into, well, let's say the blood magics. So here we go. If you don't already have lightning bottles, which by the way, you can find in the structures... This one can be a little bit more tricky as you need charged creepers. So getting that is going to be a challenge if you haven't looted the structures, but just loot, loot. That's what you really need to do. So here we go. This is an ancient codex, which will grant us access to legendary now, Ooh, which is going to be kind of nice and also is going to allow us to upgrade into the all the modium. So we will now have an all the modium spell book. What is the benefits of this? So 20% cooldown reduction, but upgraded we should get now 15% cast reduction and a 30% cooldown reduction. This is powerful and 11 slots. Wow. Okay, that is a lot of spells. So I'm starting to prep up my book and I was thinking about doing it this way. Up at the top, I'll have like my fortify abilities. In the middle will be damage abilities and the bottom here will be utility uh, items such as one of them, for example, can summon a horse um, or this one can give us the angel wings. Or, for example, we can have a teleport down here. Stuff like that. And then we'll have like a greater heal up top. And then right here is the fortify scroll. But these should be able to be combined together. For example, this should be able to be combined together. Or at least maybe not this one because of what it is potentially. But let's see. Can we combine this fortify and fortify scroll? I can. So this is going to take our t level 2 up to a level 3. Which will give us 17 uh, temporary HP. Uh, and block radius of uh, 16. Does anything else change? The mana cost does go up, but that's not a huge deal, and the cast time stays the same. So there's a Fortify spell that's now level 3. doesn't seem like the heal we can go up any. This is a max healing, so I'm wondering, does this, like, is it an instant, like, full health? Because that's pretty cool, if that's the case. The Teleport Scroll, this one can also be upgraded. Maybe this will give us more range. Oh, it does. Oh, my gosh, it doubles it. So... This is 20 range, and this upgrades it to a rare. So this is how we would just upgrade lower tier spells up to higher tiers by continuing to do this. And by the way, our mob farm drops these. I've been voiding them, but I might unlock this again just to specifically take these things and uh, and make sure we're storing them somewhere. Just like that, I now have my spell book ready to go with some of the nicest spells that I was able to see inside of here. So... That's a lot of things to switch to, but we should be able to go into hotkeys under our controls. And I noticed that there was an iron spell quick cast button. 
And this is quick cast for each of these slots that we can have available. So we would have to take a look at while this book is, is held onto, what slot is what? So this must be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, for example, all the way up to 13 when we get a higher tier book. But for example, if I wanted to be able to use the greater heal maybe on command, um, that is going to probably be the, let's see, if this is one, I don't know if it is, but one, two, three, four, maybe. So let's see if that actually works. Let's set, go to the options and we'll try this out. Just so you know as well, under the quick cast, um, let's go ahead and set it to five, right? It was one, two, three, four, five. Let's copy this to make it easier to get back and forth into, right? But it was one, two, three, four, or possibly one, two, three. So it's either the third or <laughs> I don't really know. Um, but if we go to the options back in the key binds, I'm going to paste that in real quick. So let's say three, I'm going to set that to key bind. Gosh, there's so many buttons. Let's set it to this for now. And four will set to comma. So we can test them both out to figure out what slots what. Okay, so that was fortify. So that spawned in three. So four is set to the healing. Oh, it takes a while to activate healing. But I mean, if it full heals you, that is still really powerful. Okay, so that's how that works. So we can now assign hotkeys specifically to these books. Now, here's the thing. Does it automatically switch you to your book? So no, you have to be holding the book much like ours when you go to set up hotkeys for that. Now with all that, I hope you're just as amped as I am. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. And that's because today's episode, oh, I had a lot of fun. This is such a cool armor set and a pretty darn cool mod. Hopefully we're able to use it later on and uh, hopefully it can help us throughout our journey. I know it's not a whole lot, but as far as combat goes, it's going to be really nice. And especially when you get our armor enchanted and we start really amping ourselves up and getting ourselves looking a lot nicer, Ah, we are going to be able to easily progress through the pack and go to these other dimensions that, well, <laughs> are going to take a lot of gear to progress through. So guys, if you did enjoy today's episode, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. Ah, and guys, well, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to the RPG Boy 99. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Ah, goodness. I thank you guys so, so very much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.